Good morning slash afternoon. Uh, I'm going to go through some cases very briefly, but uh, my perspective is the the country IR doing cases in his office. These are the things I'm kind of running into basically on a daily basis and things that I have to process as I start to think through cases as I'm doing cases. So again, I like to show you all my great cases and I got some good ones, but this is the kind of stuff you have to be thinking about. I'm paying just closer attention to, to the images here on your left. Um, I'm doing this case, this, this lady actually had a solid tumor. She's already been ablated and that's, that's not really the point here. Um, one of the things I've noted, and I say here, one view is no view. And it's something we use in, in, in a lot of um, just plain film reading. But one of the things I notice, one of the things I'm looking for is interdigitation when I'm starting my fill. If you can look here, and if you think about even some of the earlier cases you saw, and I'm calling this the smooth margin sign. Anytime you're getting smooth margins, you're filling a void. Like So if you're doing... Uh, uh, a bloom kyphoplasty, one of the first things you see as you start to fill a void is you see very smooth margins. When you get extravasation outside of the vertebral body, you've left the trabeculation, you're going to get smooth margins. As I start to deploy, now this is early on, but as I start to deploy now, uh, I'm looking for these, these very smooth margins. If I'm seeing really smooth margins like this, I stop and I go to my contralateral view. So um, uh, just something to think about. And the other thing is, is I kind of grew up with Define using the MLO. It's slightly smaller than the power curve. Once you deploy the power curve, I'm really looking to see what it does to my lateral margins because I know on both of these cases, I, I just bumped that lateral margin and this, the viscosity of that cement did start to push through. So learning point here. One view is no view. Make sure you manipulate both uh, both your views. And if you start to see smooth margins, suspect that that cement may be going other than where you intend. Uh, you kind of showed that that vertebra planet case, and probably one of the smartest guys I know in, bug, in bone is this guy Doug Beal. Um, he works for the enemy, but um, I, I trained under Doug, and he uses this. Uh, technique uh, that's extra particular. And we talk about going across the pedicle, we talk about going adjacent to the pedicle, but you can actually go inferior to the pedicle. So people who get, uh, like you showed actually, the, the, the guy got um, pedicle screws, and that this is actually one of my cases here. Patient's painful, I believe in the percussion as well, but I carry a little percussion hammer um, because you know these beasts right here have been known to, to break things. So I have to try to uh, institute a little bit more uh, delicacy when I'm in, uh, So I carry a percussion hammer. And same thing, if you percuss over a spinous process in a tendon, you know. So you see these, and, and I make a statement that an atypical fracture requires an atypical approach. You see, we treated this, and the majority of that cement did stay in the vertebral body. And the idea with the, uh, this extra particular approach, uh, many people who've done... Um, uh, evaluation of the disc and discogram, we kind of know this view here. You tend to go anterior into the disc. So I set up a, a, a steep lateral, a, a steep oblique view, and we can actually talk about this in the lab. If you stay anterior to the pedicle, you stay anterior to ventral ramus, approach the end plate, and then your drive into a, a vertebral body can actually be flattened. So I've gotten into some vertebral bodies that were really narrow, but also if there's instrumentation, this gives you a way to go inferior to the instrumentation. So the inferior end plate approach or extra particular approach is something I do. And this was my approach. So you see we met good crossing of midline and I stayed largely contained within that vertebral body because my entry into that vertebral body was very flat. Um, and then you ask how many levels can you do? At, uh, even though I didn't ablate, uh, this is a case I actually did Monday. Um, some salient points for this is grandma getting around, doing well, all of a sudden starts to suffer basically intractable pain, no history of fall. I think she had been doing the laundry, bending over a lot, comes in, basically physical exam led to this. And she was referred from her primary care for back pain. And I do a, a lot of... Um, uh, facet injections, facet rhizotomy. So I'm thinking, okay, this is gonna be just a typical facet arthropathy, but her pain was just out of proportion. MRI showed these levels. Now, she doesn't have a lot of support. Children have come home to support her and they're like, 
what can you do? So I said, based on the time and how we, uh, how she does, I will see if I can do all levels. And, and fortunately, um, we were able to do all four levels. Now, a significant point here is you see really pretty good feeling of this vertebral body. Um, but one of the things that happened, you see she got into a paravertebral vessel. I stopped after having gained four levels of access. I stopped, went up, treated additional levels, and came back. And uh, the significant points here for me is the viscosity of the cement allowed me to, uh, to harden that cement in that paravertebral vessel because I have literally been watching with some other cements. I see that kind of curly cue look like a crazy straw, then all of a sudden it's no longer there. You spin up and you look in the lung and she's got a little lung booger now. Um, so <laughs> I, I stopped, went up, treated those other levels and was able to treat four levels. Again, ultra viscous cement. And this is one kit, okay? This is not, so you, again, if anybody who's had exposure to Kaifon, uh, you're opening multiple kits. So in the hospital, this is significant because you get paid for one level. And I think you have to be cognizant about what you're spending. Um, also in the office, even though I can be paid for multiple, multiple levels, I still have to run a budget. So I'm, I'm budget conscious. I was able to treat four levels using uh, ultra high viscosity cement and, and the patient did well. So. <laughs>